once again, um, welcome on the Esoteric Software stream. My name is Erika and uh, in today's stream we will be resuming the creation of a 404 page, an interactive web page for the Esoteric Software website uh, featuring a spine boy navigating a vortex which we will be able to control a little bit using the mouse. So this is the project we have been working on last time. Then um, the aim is to make it do something like this, where the owl is able to follow the mouse. And I've been wanting for so long to um, share how to create this simple kind of trick that finally that we are able to do this, I'm very excited about it. Because uh, it, this app is actually very easy. It relies on having a blinking animation for the eyes, an idle animation so that they have different timings. Then there's an up animation, uh, a down animation, a side animation, the other side animation, some code and magic, and they are mixed up, and uh, this is the result. Interactive owl, but it could be your drawing being interactive, and uh, it's not just limited to a desktop, it can also be put on a web page, and uh, it can be self-standing. Oh, so in case you downloaded the files, you'll be able to find them here. They look like this. We have two examples in the second link that I shared above. And uh, uh, they are commented. So they were nicely commented by Nate. I, I'm a dumb artist, okay? I don't know how this works, but there's nice comments so that everybody can learn how to use this. And if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it as well. You will just have to follow the steps to make this work. Uh, by the way, this file is self-enclosed. So here we have the JSON, Atlas and PNG file. If you see something huge when you're opening the file, make sure to uncheck the wrapping of the words where is it? it was view word wrap because uh, otherwise uh, you are going to see like this very very long file and it's because uh, thanks to this you just move the html wherever you want and it already has animations and uh, images and uh, uh, the atlas file all inside it so that it really can work also offline we have two examples I actually know how to use the example that uses the animation blending because that's the one I've used on my website as well. Uh, but there's uh, Nate also included a version that instead of having uh, the, the four animation blend together, it controls a single bone that controls uh, uh, the um, interactivity of the file. So that's something that you can also the, the result is identical, but under the hoods is a little bit different. So in case you are interested, there are several ways to achieve the same objective. So I invite you to download the, the files. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll be down here. Let's go over what we did last time. We have for Spine Boy a structure that is very simple, but it's very powerful. So it allows us, thanks to these two bones, one that controls the whole structure of Spine Boy and one that controls its position to uh, translate it in space uh, so it can uh, float around. So what we can do is move the legs around and make them cool again. We can also move the hands, by the way. Uh, what's left to do for this project is the vortex and uh, the set up the animation. So we'll have an idle animation where everything moves and spins. Then we'll have uh, the four animations in the four directions so that spine boy can be at each extreme and then once we have everything set we are going to export these files uh, so that we can later implement them inside the two files that i sent you above uh, that can be out, uh, downloaded oh here is the sketch so ideally it should look like something like this in the end also we have this particle here that i guess it's supposed to also uh, go our way so we'll have to place a control for that too that's gonna be interesting okay so this white part that i have here needs to be slightly bigger okay so that it reaches this edge and we are going to use it as mask uh, for each of these rings otherwise it's gonna be very difficult 
So first of all, we are going to need a bone to hold all these vortex images. Um, and the easiest way, since they are all centered in the middle, is to just click new and then oh, I can even close the weights panel here. So new and then we create a new bone. So it's created exactly in the middle and we are going to name it vortex. I have an unfortunate placement for this microphone because it's in front of my keyboard. But apart from that, we select everything here, oh, except for the sketch. We don't need that and we drag it and release it under the vortex bone so that it's parented to it so that when I move this one everything falls oh I forgot I forgot the white part I haven't parented it okay so now everything moves with it another thing that we need to do is um, take this nice particle and we also will create a bone for it I mean create mode I press Ctrl and hold it, then I click on the image so that when I create the image it's gonna be automatically named after the particle and with the particle uh, slot and attachment underneath it. I need the vortex and I make several copies so I'm going to close this temporarily and make this six, seven, eight. Or perhaps I'm just gonna leave them like this in setup and begin our idle animation. Uh, let's see, I'm going to scale the first one, then here we have the second one, then here we have the third one. Uh, instead of just uh, uh, changing the draw order for this, perhaps I'm going to use a trick to simulate the fact that they enlarge while I'll be instead um, making them smaller or bigger and then switch back to the beginning of the animation to make it seamless. Okay, so I guess this is also uh, big enough to cover the page because it's gonna be something like this. And yeah. We first set these uh, here. Ah, we already had uh, a sort of moving spine boy animation. Yeah, it was just a test. <laughs> and that's nice. We're gonna leave it there and then I'm gonna brutally remove it. Yeah, perhaps it's in the way. I want to have them separated. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And the vortex idle, I'm going to get rid of everything else that we have here. Here we will concentrate on just scaling the parts without, without moving them around maybe. So they need to all increase in size. Yeah, I'm going to make another copy like this. Do I want to duplicate the keys? Yes, yes. Let's have also the keys duplicator. And where is it? It's here. So I'm going to have the super tiny vortex in the middle of it. Uh, by the way, I guess I'm going to change the background so that it's easier for us to simulate how this is gonna look in the end. So I'm gonna choose solid, and then I'm gonna set white. So it looks more like our page. So I think that I'm going to copy and paste the scale amounts from one bone to another so that I can seem, make it seamless. Uh, so that these spirals look like they are coming towards us. Okay, let's start from the biggest one. So I need to do this. I deselect so that everything is selectable. I copy these keyframes. I paste them on frame 50, but it could be any frame. I'm going to select vortex 9 and I paste it on vortex 8. Oh, then that works. So then I copy this. Then I go on vortex 7. I move in the middle and paste. Then I copy this one, I move on vortex 6. So we're going to see them come towards us and then go back, but I'll just uh, delete the frames on frame 50 so that it's not visible anymore. Yeah, I have to copy this, copy, and then I go on frame here. So after all this copying and pasting, I deselect everything, I remove the frames on frame 50, and that should be it. Yes, we did it! So there's just one vortex that it's shrinking, but it's kind of a nice effect, so I think I'm gonna leave it like that. 
but I think that we, we can already have a left, right, uh, and so on animations. So let's do that. Uh, let's say that we have a left animation here. So we have all these, all these vortices here, and we want them to be increasingly moving to one side or another. So we can even do it very simply like this, but I don't guarantee it's going to... Like, uh, we can see the result of this when we open the preview view. And, oh yeah, of course, I have to also deselect this sketch, otherwise it's going to be omnipresent. I'm going to open the preview view here, so it's easier to see. And we can combine the animations so that they play on several tracks at the same time. So, for example, no, don't tell me. I did it. I inverted Spine Boy Idol and Vortex Idol. So, for example, we have this, and then we have Spine Boy navigating in it. I'm already getting him on dice. Uh, and then we combine this with the left animation. It's nothing is happening. Why? Oh, because it's on frame two. Okay, let's move it like this, and now suddenly it works. So you see that from here, if we lower the alpha, we can control where it is going. But to get that actually mesmerizing effect, we have to displace them so that uh, the vortex are co uh, the vortices are covering each other. I have to close the preview because it's already making me feel a bit sick. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We move them all and displace them a little bit. So if this is our extreme and that's nice, we move these. Ah, yeah, I can use this as a reference. That's nice. So we could do this. It's vortex 8. Okay. So if it's vertex 8 and I remove this, okay, that works. Then I have to make vertex 8 bigger. I can do this. Okay, that's it. I Perhaps I make it disappear because like this, it's not super pretty. So vertex 8, you are destined to disappear. So the color that it has here, it's going to progressively disappear like this. Cool. Uh, oh, we can go fancy and uh, make the ripples uh, disappear like at different speeds. Let's check out the result. Uh, I imagined it the other way around. So let's check out. Yeah, more like what I hoped it would happen. So here where it appears, it means uh, that I have to make Vortex 9 appear. Okay, so that means that we did a fine job. Also, it's super tiny. Nobody's gonna notice it, but I had to do it, right, you know? If we combine this with that... Ah, uh, yeah. They, they do this ugly thing where it clicks like that. Because, as I said, they are not uh, moving from one side to another we have to point to make every vortex end up in the position that the previous vortex had. So maybe we have a small animation where we displace these parts in the left. Yeah, that could work. So let's see. This is 25 frames. So our left animation will need to have 25 frames too. Okay, the result is more or less fine. For some reason, they are not very transparent. But this part should cover those ones. So let's check out the draw order. The draw order is a mess. Okay. Um, so to make everything easy, uh, easier to identify, I'm going to temporarily recolor the various vortices. It's supposed to be here. We did it! Now that I used it to fix the mess that I did earlier, I can get rid of this beautiful rainbow with colors and restore them to white. Oh, nice. So now when this goes, 
there's still that flickering but they at least show that vortex effect like it's behind something so i'm gonna save and i'm going to now try to fix the fact that they move that much and i will be doing that mm, perhaps this can work so you know how you can copy and paste the uh, translation keys of a bone so we are going to make use of that so first we select one two so i start from the number one because i want to paste it on the frame uh, zero and i copy their transforms when they are here then i select these bones instead i go on frame 25 and i paste their transforms in hopes that this worked i did it it worked okay so now did i make the flickering words oh perhaps it's because they are not in sync ah oh, that could be the reason so let's set them to zero for a moment then I set the mix to zero two. Okay, I remove the animation here and then I place the vortex animation. Then I go in here and I press Fine Boy animation. And then I go here, I remove it, and then I apply the left animation. And then I resume the speed. Yeah, it was just a matter of the animations not being aligned in the preview, but now it's seamless. So the cool thing about these is that we can also change the alpha and as you see we already have uh, that little bit of interactivity that allows us to move the vortex around so i'll copy the left animation so that it's yeah the other left right okay and uh, i'll try to do this so the rotation key here, not the translation key, for these, I'll call, okay, so this is like minus. My aim now will be to remove all the minuses that we have in all keys so that they are basically the same but reversed. So it's going to be mechanical, but it doesn't require any calculations and it's going to be perfectly symmetrical, so we like that. So we reflect this, now let's check out the result. And we set the speed back to normal, and this is the result. Now the vortex is going in the opposite direction. Now, and here comes the magic, when we change the alpha, we basically made the vortex so that it can change completely direction. And this is going to be something that uh, we can control with the mouse. We are also going to add up and down animations so that this vortex can bring us uh, to unforeseen places. Yeah. And then we'll also have to establish where Spam Boy stands in all of this. All right, so this is the setup for this and it looks totally broken in here, but it's amazing how it looks uh, in the final version of it. So now we make the up animation and we use the same principle so we start from this vortex that we had here which was the most extreme and we move it all the way up now i'm going to do the copy pasting so this is going to translate here on frame 25 Now I'm going to do already the reverse animation of down so that I can all set them all in one go. So I'm going to duplicate this animation here. I'm going to call the animation down. I'm going to save. And I'm going to reverse this by simply adding a minus in front of the translate um, values that we have here. So vertex 8 is fine. Here I just add the minus, same, oh here it's not necessary, then here I add, I add the minus, 
I select and I add the minus two. And I can make use of this to, to set the alpha this way. So that if I want, I can change wherever this is going. So you see, we can have intermediate positions. Ah, and the particle, the magical particle. I'm going to have that in the vortex idle. I haven't thought of a solution for that, so I'm going to do something very simple for now. So we need to scale this down in the first frame. Then on frame 25, it's scaled to its normal size, or maybe even bigger, so one and two. And then it starts from the middle where it is, but it ends up something like this. And then I make it appear at some point of the animation. So key the color, I key the color here, and then I make it disappear here. And it also appears the same way. So it does this. So I'm going to duplicate this particle with the animation and then displace it so that we can have several of these particles around. Perhaps I'm going to create another bone so that I rotate the bone and the particle is going to do the same animation but change depending on the rotation of the bone. This time, if I rotate the holder, the result is going to be different because this is going to be the res result. See? Nice! We are going to offset the various particles. So basically I select the bone and then I select the offset tool. So I copy the first key. I shift everything here. I copy the first key. I press copy. I press paste. Then I copy this key. Now I have to redo this. I know already. And then I offset it because now the keys are the same. Uh, let's check them out here. So uh, this is the problem. This is the problem. They don't work that nicely in the middle. Perhaps I just try to parent these particles to the first bone. Well, that killed the particles. <laughs> oh, because I scaled down the vortex. So I guess if I uncheck skill, yeah, they will be back. And it actually improved them. Like, it was that easy. Fantastic. So now that we fixed the particles, we are going to also fix how Spine Boy moves. We have to simulate its pose so that it looks more down when he, when the down animation is, is playing. So something like this. In the left animation, you can even move the control inverse here. So he could be like here, for example. Yeah, so this is the most left. Then let's see the right. Yeah, the right is gonna be complicated. <laughs> uh, so, control inverse is here. We move him here. And here we are going to push his little fragile body as much as we can in this direction. At least with this, it should move. And then up. Ah, the up animation doesn't have uh, anything in particular. Yeah, now Spine Boy is moving with it. Oh, finally. So what's left is to make a little idle animation for Spine Boy. So perhaps in hyperspace, he is uh, moving like this. Oh yeah, I almost forgot that we can rotate these parts to, to get some cool effects. So for example, we get him like this. Then we key the rotation here. And then we key the rotation on the opposite side like this. And now let's see it here. Ah, well, it is working. It is working. Uh, we have down, left, right, spine boy idle, vortex idle ready. 
now let me export these first i'll export it on my desktop so export okay so we have this we are going to export a simple json in this case uh we i'm not gonna check animation cleanup because we want all the keys that we set special data pack packing settings attachments let's check out so polygons that's a good idea then i just want to have maybe at 0.3 dimension so it's tiny then i don't want no suffix i just want to export it like that then let, let's see the result of this just wait here yeah an hour later now it, it finished uh here it is also look how cute this owl is and we are going to do the same for spine boy shortly so let's check out the result did it finish was exporting one oh i forgot to uncheck the vortex sketch that's gonna be so huge yeah i'll have to re re-export immediately okay so this atlas is not very optimized <laughs> because these rings got exported like this which is super silly it's small okay uh let's pretend that this is fine just because i want to start seeing this in action so uh, let's see how we can uh import these inside our example so let's pretend that we have this i'm going to make a copy of it of this one which makes use of these scenes so instead of all i'm going to call it vortex and i'm going to open vortex in uh, sublime text okay so you'll see this which is very overwhelming so the first thing we want to do is to find the word wrap in the settings and then check it so that we can read it it's because we have the scripts here embedded so it can work offline that's why um there's so many characters now we want to uh create a base 64 file for each of these and replace the owl with the spine boy and vortex Hmm, perhaps it is. So I went on a website. Any website is fine to do this. That's going to generate uh, the data URI for the image. So I just drag and drop the image here. Then I just copy this. And I go back to my Sublime Text application. I select all of this. So this is actually super long and uh, we are just going to see how it ends it has a little parenthesis and uh, a punto virgola we call it in italian uh, i'm missing the word at the moment anyway we are going to delete this so i make sure that those missing marks are there so if it's like this i see no more errors i paste and uh, i want to check that the beginning is correct this file is huge data image png it looks correct to me okay then we do the same also for the atlas and json files but whatever they are all the same basically you just say uh, search for base64 and code open the exported files that we had here so for example we start with the atlas file okay i select everything i copy it i go back here i paste and encode that's the one so now i copy okay so since it doesn't seem to output that i'm just going to leave this first part and uh, instead do this this and this and this okay and after that i'm going to copy and paste this what's weird is that this is the same um, it has different letters despite being supposedly the same thing so what if i do this ah and now they are the same 
Okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> so copy and okay. And then we do the same on this one. What's left is the JSON. So I double click, I open it, I select everything, I copy it, then I go here. I I don't know, I use this website. Everything is the same in any case, it doesn't matter. So we encode. And then I copy here. And this basically allows us to add files to our file. We enclose files in the file. Okay, then instead of Owl Pro, we use uh, the name that we have on export, which is Spine Vortex B3. Damn it. I don't really like that name. At least this part is easy. Then we replace, basically I can find, control find, all, all pro. Well, it's these four instances, so I can even find them all and paste and then save. And then instead of idle, idle, blink, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, have the same name as we have here in this fine file. But then we have spine boy idle and vortex idle, which are our idle um, animations. So vortex, yeah, this is the same thing twice. So I'm gonna remove it. Vortex idle. Okay, so if everything went well, now is the moment of the reveal. Perhaps it will work, and if it works, I cry. It kind of works, but in reverse. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it works in reverse. I know why. <laughs> so that's that's actually very cool. We just have to fine tune it. Um, so we have to make the background white and uh, to invert these two animations. Uh, we invert left and right. So that it looks more correct and doesn't seem like it goes the opposite way. That, okay, that's the alpha of the animation. So render, delta, front, oh, color, we found the color. So instead of this, we replace it with one, one, one. So it becomes white, then save. Then we open it again in the browser and it should be correct. We did it, we did it. Amazing, let's look at this result. Then, of course, we can set this canvas to be the size that we need, but that can be done by code. We basically have an interactive spine boy. Now we can make these animations more fancy. So, for example, he moves uh, more when he's in a certain direction instead of another. But this is it. And uh, if we want to go the even fancier way, I'm going to open my uh, wallpaper application to show you very quickly how you can uh, do this because it's so damn easy so here is a project that i already did i just have to open it in the editor so i'm gonna create a new wallpaper editor project so this is the like extra fancy stuff uh, that i wanted to absolutely show at the end of the stream i think i'm gonna do this voila okay Oh, no, you don't have to import my whole uh, desktop. That's too much. Well, it, I guess it tried to import all those files. So if that is the case, it's going to be. Uh, I'll have to delete them. Yeah, it did. It tried to import everything. So of course it doesn't work, but it works. It works. Okay, so since it works and I didn't want to import all this stuff, I'm going to open this in Explorer so that I can delete the extra stuff went in here and I'm just literally going to delete everything that I have here and leave just the vortex page because we don't need anything else. All right, then since we did this, I can just select it here and have it ready as a wallpaper already. So remember when I had the owl, now I have him and he shall be interactive on my desktop like this easy easy isn't it and then to publish it you just go and 
select Steam because this is a Steam application wallpaper editor. And then you go share wallpaper on workshop. So I'm going to publish this as a first version just to demonstrate that you can do it. I'm just going to import this. All right. And then we publish it. Oh, and then it can't publish it because I, I don't have Steam open. But this is the process. See, it's super, super easy. And uh, I already have it as an interactive wallpaper that can work even uh, when nothing is working. Um, you are going to be able to download these same files uh, at the end of the stream. And that's it. I hope it was formative. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to refine this further or not, but as you saw, it was really, really easy. So yeah, we made an interactive wallpaper where Spine Boy is uh, moving in perspective, following it and uh, falling down the rabbit hole. Uh, that's nice. We can push this even further and add something fancier, but my aim for today's stream was uh, to show you how you could do this yourself. Right? So you could have salaries, you could have uh, also uh, characters that look your way or do fancy stuff. Like, on, remember that this is a mixed mixing animation. So instead of having your character uh, move around, it could even it could be doing this. Like, for example, when the mouse is on this side, it's calm. And when it gets on this side, it, it gets dancing. So it could also be that kind of mixing of the animation, calm and then dancing. And so really your imagination is the limit. This is a great tool. You saw that it's easy to use uh, in case you don't have uh, two idle animations, just delete one and don't think about it anymore and save. No, I needed that, so I'm going to leave it there. But you see, these, these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are the tracks that we also had in uh, the preview view here in Spine. Did I close it? Ah, no, it's because in setup mode. So it's these tracks that we had here. Yeah, I had too many of them, but you get the point. Um, so yeah, I am really looking forward to what you are going to, how you are going to use this uh, tool. And... Uh, See you in the future with another project because this was the last for this cycle. It was a fast stream, but I hope you found it uh, enjoying nonetheless. So bye bye and uh, thank you again for staying with me until the end of the video.